Hi everybody. Well, today's challenge is going to be using the same drawing uh, multiple times in different ways and I want you to be as inventive and creative as you want to be. I've put a photograph and a line drawing up in the um, details and they'll also be in the resources folder. So I hope you can find those easy enough. Um, but what I want you to do is you can use my line drawing that I've included or you can use any line drawing you've got but reproduce it frequently. So you can do this through photocopying, you can trace it down on different papers using trace down paper, uh, you can just freehand draw it, whatever you want to do, but I want you to try different ways of painting or colouring or drawing in the scene. So you could use watercolours, acrylics, you could do Zentangle, you could doodle it, you could um, use Biros, you can use felt tips, it doesn't matter. I just want you to, to try lots of different ways and, and hopefully one of those will kind of spark your imagination on for, for something else that you want to do. Now let me tell you the tale of our Peggy. Peggy's the bird in the picture, it's a cockatiel. And it was my daughter's bird when she was a child. Bless her, she loved this little bird. She'd had a cockatiel already that had got out. Um, and she was desperately unhappy. She was probably about 11 or 12 at the time, desperately missing her, her cockatiel. So uh, I phoned around all the vets, tried to find you know, whether she'd, she'd been handed in. And I got a call back from one of the vets saying they'd had a grey cockatiel, handed in, would I go down and see if it was our bird? So I did, went down there. And it wasn't her bird, but they had this cockatiel in a bucket. It was the only thing they had to house it. So I said, look, how about, I'm telling you this is not our bird, but how about I take this home, we've got an empty cage at home and I've got a distraught daughter, so maybe it will distract her slightly. So we took this bird home and my daughter picked it up out of the bucket when I got home and she said, Mum, you do realise this bird has only got one leg, don't you? Um, and she had a little stump where her second leg should be, um, and just the, the, the one leg, but she was the sweetest bird. But this little peg leg is how she got her name Peggy. Uh, so yes, you won't see two feet in the picture, and that's because she only had one, bless her, but she had a very happy life, and she was a gorgeous, really sweet bird. So this is our Peggy that we've got in the picture. So I have this picture of Peggy, I've got my layer of trace down paper and then my, my piece of watercolour paper. So it's just going to be a case of going around the image. Okay, so you just go around the whole image and then you lift it up to make sure you've got what you need there. There's plenty of smudges on there where I've put my fist on the trace down paper but I can deal with that in a second. So I'm happy that I've got the image that I need and I'm just going to go over it now because I want this to be quite clear. Around the eye. So we've got our Peggy. Now I'm going to put something down there. Now these patches that you can see on here, that's just where I've put my fist into the trace down paper. And they rub away quite easily. So don't worry if you kind of get these little smudges on your paper. So here we've got my drawing of Peggy. Um, and I just, again, I'm, I'm going to play with paint, but it would be quite acceptable to uh, use some of Ali H's techniques that she did for her um, portrait that you all did 
a few weeks ago, which I thought was absolutely wonderful with her um, geometric shapes and all of that that you went into with that. So all I've done here so far is wet the page. There is no rule with this. There is absolutely no rule with this. I've got some ink here. I'm just dripping down. I'm not worried about the drawing or where any of this goes, so I'm going to come back in with this later. So these are iridescent FW acrylic inks. They're a bit old and a bit chewed up, so they're a, um, quite thick. Somewhere I've got a spray. Here we go. bit of brush show going on as well. This is the brilliant red. And this is my absolute favourite colouring brush show. This is grey. So we've got an incredible amount of colours going on there. There's lots of different ways you can treat this. Now I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to brush together around the outside and leave all of that in the middle. I need to dry that so I shall be back to you in just I'm just tilting you to show you the little bits of iridescence off those inks. So because so much of this is already uh, done with all our pattern it's just about making sure it stands out. So I'm coming back to my using my watercolours uh, and I'm using mark off the palette but you could use a neutral tint or a ultramarine and umber mixed together but what I want to do in my photograph in the reference all of this side of the bird is quite light so I want to make the background darker so I'm just coming in behind her head putting this neutral colour, negative painting back into some of her feathers, and her chest and the side of her head. I've got this twig here, so what I want to do is just take my brush and soften that edge. You've seen that done so many times before, just softening that out. I have a little more colour. I'm working vertically so it's all moving everywhere. Just underneath this twig again. These layers down here where she was standing on her hand but just hinting at those. Now this side, she, Peggy is darker, so I'm not going to going to do this washing out on this side. Just 
just need to bring that up a little bit up by her crest. Missed a bit there, so I just need to bring that in as well. Wash that away and only do as much as you can do in the time it takes you to allow your paint to dry. So she's beginning to, to appear already. Now I'm going to look at her beak. This is all, at the moment, it's just all using these shadow colours because I don't really want to go over these wonderful colours that we've got here. So I'm just using my shadow colour. Like I say, that could be natural grey from Matthew if you've got that. Uh, Payne's grey, lady grey, one of the Daniel Smith colours which are wonderful. So I've just put the shadow onto the beak, again cleaned my brush out. And the lower part of the beak, this bit needs to be a bit darker. Soften that away. So I'm not worried about worrying so much about the colours. One, it's a grey bird, and two, um, we've got so much colour on there, just doing this in the neutrals is actually quite nice. So you've got the nostril there, a little bit of colour around it, a little bit of shading. I keep putting my fist in it, so be careful. And then up here we've got her feathers, which are dark on this side. Then clean my brush, dry it off so it's just damp, and pull those feathers out. A little bit behind that nostril, just a bit of shading. go around the eye. There's lots of little lines and creases around the eye. You can get little, little lines. A little tiny bit of shading there. Again, I've just washed my brush out using a damp brush just to pull that down. I'll come back to the eye in just a minute. I think the eye brings it to life so I want to leave that till sort of near the end. So down this side we've got a bit of shading going on there. Dark patch there, so again put it in, clean my brush. I'm going to not take it quite up to that beak because I don't want to lose the beak in what I'm looking at. Okay, that's dried off. I think that edge of that beak could take a stronger dark. Coming down her back, and because a lot of watercolours are transparent, unless you put them on really thickly, you will see some of those hints of those colours coming through. And she's got this little area here, so again, put it on. Only work as much as you feel you can deal with before it dries off. And then smudge that edge. Darker line coming up there. Got that bit and then 
I can see it. And if you lose your lines, you can always put your trace down back over. Lots of little feathers coming through here. And then there's these ones that I drew in. This is a little bit of negative painting behind these feathers. I'm going a bit off piece because I've lost my drawing a little bit, but I know what's there. Okay, we're getting there. There's a few little fluffy bits there. A bit of shadow under her tummy. We've got this foot. And one toe going back. I'm not going to put too much detail in, it's not that type of a painting. Fluffy bits across her chest. Bring you on a bit to show you what I'm doing. This is going to be in a couple of layers, I think. Leaving a little bit of that background colour for a highlight. Now, I'm just waiting for that eye to dry off a little bit. And I've got a very strong mix of the colour. I've got a very strong mix of the colour and I'm just putting an extra dark part in for the iris. and spots. Finished anatomically accurate colour coordinated painting. What again I wanted you to do here was just to have a bit of fun, have a bit of a play and not worry about the results, but just enjoy the sort of randomness of it all. So copy this picture as many times as you like. I want to see your surrealist version. I want to see your um, pointillist version, perhaps. Um, your cubist version, of course. You all know how to do that now.
and then this is my throw a load of colour around and see what happens version. Let's take you in a little bit. You can see how all those those brush marks, the you could use inks, you could use acrylics. Give it this wonderful, colourful Peggy. Tomorrow I'll show you a completely different way of working on the Peggy drawing. Uh, there's so many different things you can do, but I'm going to show you using charcoal and water to do a little sketch. So I hope that will be something that I know some of you will have tried it before, but some of you won't, so that should be a bit of fun.